In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom slider um, with changing icons so that as you move the slider back and forth, you're able to move between four different uh, pictures. Stay tuned to find out how. Hello and welcome back to another Thunkable Tip. My name is Donal and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a volume slider using the slider component. So I'm assuming that you've watched the first video in our series where we added in the slider and we learned how to customize it. And in this one we're going to play around a little bit with um, if statements and we're also going to learn a little bit about using some of these layout components as well. So the first thing then that we'll do is create um, a, a simple slider with uh, no, no control flow and uh, no decisions to be made. Um, what we'll do here uh, is use a horizontal arrangement uh, from the layout and we'll drag and drop in the slider component. So I can just do, do that again. You can notice the little blue line um, goes uh, vertical there uh, to indicate that the slider is inside the horizontal arrangement. And I'm going to use two of these image components. That's a date picker. I'm going to use two image components here, one to the left and I'm going to use another one here to the right like that. Okay, um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose images. So on the left hand side, image one should be the um, volume down or volume off icon and image two then should be the uh, volume on or volume high icon as well. So we saw in the image tutorial that you can use uh, material.io to download your own material design icons. You can make your own, you can create your own of course as well, but uh, you can just see that doing a search for volume here gives us these four icons, volume down, mute, volume off, and volume up. I've already downloaded them all, so let's say we wanted this off icon here. We just click download the format that we want and uh, it gets saved to our computer. Once we've exported them then, I've uploaded mute and off and up. We'll just select the one that we want here from our downloads. So let's get volume down. And what I've done, I've mentioned this before, just to make it easier for us to code with. So rather than having the default name, I see underscore volume underscore down, I've renamed it here so that it's just down.png like so. Click OK, gets uploaded to Thunkable like this. So what we want then is let's have a look here. We'll have uh, we could have volume off perhaps over here. Okay, so that looks a little bit too big even on the designer. If we were to look at the uh, screencast here, you'd see it's way too big. So let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's go for 32 by 32 is a good size to start with anyway. Uh, 32 pixels by 32 pixels like that. Looks better anyway. Uh, that's not too bad at all. And then one thing I notice is that the slider is up at the top of my arrangement and my volume icon is uh, taking up, it's, it, they're not centered essentially. So we can choose the center alignment, not just on screen one, but also within our arrangement components like this. And now if we have a look in here, this looks much better. So the slider is uh, in here. It's great. And then for image two, we'll set the picture property. Well, same thing, we'll set it to be 32 by 32, first of all. And then we'll set it to be a volume up icon like this. All right. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. We can change the colors, but this is a nice simple way of creating. This could go into like a little setting screen or something like that. You can give your user the option of choosing how low the or how high the volume should be. And we could even put in a little label maybe underneath beside it to indicate the, um, the actual value rather than showing it up in the title. Uh, we could put that into a label. So uh, let's have a look at that. Let's put in a label over here. Um, let's move everything over to the uh, left hand side of the screen and we'll change the font to be the uh, Roboto font. Like Roboto regular. And we'll have volume like that. And then what we'll do is when we move our slider around, what we're going to do then is when the slider position changed. Oh yeah, that's this one here. This is These are the blocks from the previous um, app that we built. We are going to change the text property and we're going to join together the word volume with the value of the thumb position. So we'll put in the word uh, volume like this 
And don't forget these strings type out everything that you type in. So if we want to put in a space, we actually have to add in the space after the and colon there. Uh, let's get rid of that and replace it with this. So hopefully now we've got a little label here and that tells us what the volume is. So you can see in the previous one, we did our rounding and that's probably a good idea to do something like that here as well. So in math, we've got the ability to uh, round the number here to zero decimal places. That'll get rid of the decimal point like that. That gets rid of our decimal point. And now this is a nicer looking uh, volume label, I think. Okay, so that's a very quick and very easy way to create a volume uh, slider. Uh, but um, So let's challenge ourselves a little bit. Let's replace uh, these icons here with a dynamic icon. Um, so we've looked in the past at how to create um, toggling icons and toggling, uh, changing the icons on buttons. But what we're going to do now then is we're going to add in image three here to my app like this. Um, get rid of my, gonna hide my label here for a minute. I'm gonna put everything into the center of the screen. Image three, put it into the center of the screen like that. And I'm gonna make image three a little bit bigger. Um, we had 32 by 32. Let's do um, 64 by 64 like this. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And let's just test it out, see what, uh, let's start at zero like this. So mute um, looks like that. We could have off maybe like that there as well. Okay, so that looks um, pretty good. Okay, so we'll do a couple of different uh, tests and then every time we're gonna hide these two images here. Um, make that invisible and make that invisible. And then slider one, its starting position is going to be, um, let's say zero. Start it at the left. Um, okay, so we're gonna slide up and down and we're gonna change this icon based on uh, the thumb position. Okay, so let's just do a two first of all. We've got, um, we've got off, we've got mute, we've got down, and then we've got up. So we've got four different icons here. We've got um, this mute icon um, is low volume, off like this is silenced. So that'll be the value for zero. We've got three other points in between. So roughly every 30 uh, points or so, 30 or 35 points, uh, what we'll do is um, we'll change those pictures like that. Um, so in the thumb position changed, what we'll do is a couple of tests. So we'll check if the thumb position is, if thumb position equals zero, uh, if thumb position equals zero, like this. You go into control, you get that if block. The blue blocks then come out of the math category. Uh, what we're gonna do is image three is our main image. We're gonna set the picture on image three to be uh, off.png. So off.png. And this is kind of why we would rename it because it makes it very easy to work with. And then we go into the, this thing here is called a mutator. We go into the blue little gear icon here. We click on that, drag the else block over immediately to the right. And what it does is it mutates or it changes the shape of the else block in here. So if it's not off, then what we'll do is we have uh, an on, now we have up.png, we have uh, down.png, so we'll go for down.png just for the moment. We'll add in some more tests then, down.png. So let's have a look here. Um, it should be at zero, like that. And it'd, be not, it'd be helpful if we could see our starting value. Our, um, designer here, we have to make sure then that our slider goes down to zero, otherwise this won't work. Okay, and let's have a look here, like this. Um, so the reason it went into the middle was because we told it to go into the middle, um, and then when we start sliding it up like that, it changes. So we want that volume to increase. So we'll do um, a few little tests then. So if, uh, we can add in some else ifs then. So we can do else if for the uh, mute, we can do else if for down, and then else um, will be the up.png. That'll be the last one then that we want to display. Up.png, down.png will go here. This is 
for low volumes. And finally then we'll put in the mute.png. So we want to check um, if it's between certain range. So we'll use the and block here. So we're going to check if it's uh, greater than uh, zero and if it's greater than zero and uh, if it's less than or equal to, uh, let's say 10. Less than or equal to 10. Next one then we'll do is somewhere between 10 and 70. So if it's uh, greater than 10, and then less than or equal to 70, and then if it's greater than 70, so that's the final case, it'll be at the high volume icon like that. Now what I'm gonna do actually is we saw in a previous video that we can comment out um, by disabling blocks like this. So let's uh, get rid of that one there. So when it's off, we get the um, this icon, then as we start sliding it up, the volume icon starts to change. And then when it gets high, we get the loud icon. So it only goes up to um, 50 in my design, so we should change that to make sure it goes up to 100, like this. And then it's a good idea maybe to use something like this for, let's say, just for debugging, so we can actually see what values we've got. Now, much better. So it's off by default, excellent. Everything looks the way we want, so it's off by default like that. And then as we start sliding it up, we get the low volume, gradually increasing, and then when we get above 70, we've got our maximum volume. And we could even do things in there, like change the um, color of the um, slider and stuff like that uh, as it gets louder and louder. So a nice, easy way to chop and change back between multiple icons based on the um, position based on a variable in your app. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this in the future and you're keen to learn more about Thunkable, click subscribe. And if you want to be the first to know when a new video is released, then click on the notification bell just beside the subscribe button. Leave your questions in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video.